What's up team? Welcome back. It is your biggest fan, the real Casadero. And in this session, we're continuing on like we did in the last session, team. And I apologize, this one is a little late. Starting tomorrow, uploads will be at the same time every day. So you've got your drive time hour long body of knowledge, team. So anyway, in this one, team, we're talking more about how to go out and get the job you want. Somebody left a comment in the in the last episode. So let's get into it, team. This is the show for people that want to learn to code for fun and for profit so they can do the things they want to do and live the lives they want to live and be the people they want to be. Let's get into it, team. So we are here on the desktop team and if we head over to YouTube I'm gonna open up PowerShell by hitting Windows PWSH and I'm just gonna type in YouTube and this is a function that I have inside of PowerShell literally all it does is uh, it just brings up YouTube when I type in YouTube let me show you guys this function real quick so if I go into uh, and you guys can all do this if you want to follow along whatever all you need is PowerShell and actually I can if you're on, if you're on a Windows machine, you just go in and you just type PowerShell and it'll bring this up. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type code and I'm going to do a dollar sign profile. And this is going to open up my profile for PowerShell. And inside of here, I have all these functions. And if I go and I do a Control F and I do a YouTube, we can see I got this YouTube function right here. And it's just function YouTube start process. So check this out, team. If we go back over here into PowerShell, we can go function. Uh, GitHub and then we can just add some curly brackets and inside of those curly brackets we put a start dash process and then inside of these quotation marks we put HTTPS forward slash forward slash uh, GitHub dot com forward slash and I'm saying it wrong I'm saying forward slash but I'm going backslash forward slash forward slash GitHub dot com forward slash the real Casadero and then we hit enter and we can type clear and now for that function we can type github and it will open up the github page team so that's how you just that's how you make a quick simple function in youtube i mean not youtube but in powershell so anyway if we go over here to youtube if we go to uh we'll go to my channel your channel and we'll go down to careers and, then I'll and we'll pause this and if we go down and we look at the comments somebody said um do all right, so the first comment, do do I offer mentorship? Hey team, check it out, right? If you want some mentorship, right? If you if you want if you want the motivation and the inspiration to be able to go out and build the things you want to build, check out the code 365 startup lab team. Three six five startup lab dot com. Over here we got some free courses. These are gonna change today. These are going to change, right? They're all going to get they're all going to get prices. They're not nothing expensive. I'm going to leave the web dev primer free, and what I'm going to do is I'm, in, I'm I'm going to expand it. I'm going to expand all of these courses. I'm going to expand all of these courses. The HTML primer. This is probably going to become HTML genius. Uh, the PowerShell primer. I'm going to expand that out so it's it's full of scripting stuff. The web dev toolkit. Uh, that'll probably stay the same. We'll leave that free probably. And then we got the web dev primer. This is just an introductory uh, introduction to web development. But inside of here, instead of just building like some random page like we do, um, I'm going to pick a site, probably like a portfolio site or some kind of business site or niche site or something where I show people how to build a site, put it online, and then use that to go out and start getting some money, team. And then, of course, if you want all of those for free, like after they have prices, if you want all of those, they'll be included inside of the Code 365 Startup Lab and also inside of the Code 365 Startup Lab detailed, detailed courses on HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And then uh, once those are all done, I'm going to be putting inside of the Code 365 Startup Lab all kinds of dope stuff, team. I'm talking tutorials on how to build websites, and we're just going to go out and pick we we'll just we'll just go out and we'll pick random sites because there's a there's a core there there's a core group of sites not well it's not even a core group of sites number one if you want to get into web development or software development you got to build stuff team you got to build stuff if you if you would just want a job you got to build stuff if you want to make money like if you really want to use this skill for what I believe it can be used for then you need to be building websites 
you see a website you see an advertisement you see something that, that looks cool you should be out there like hey how do i how do i build this thing team how do i make something like this how can i turn this, the ideas in my head and we're going to talk more about that in this episode but anyway team if you want to support the channel head over to the code 365 startup lab and in there right i, I want to put together not not necessarily a mentorship program but we have the discord already and i don't know i don't know if there's anybody in there right now so let's go let's open up discord so we hit windows dis c o r d and this will open up discord we got the discord and i'm just setting that up but what i want to do is it the goal is to bring people together so they begin to collaborate yeah so there's not there's not anybody in to get in the discord right now so you have a place to go and ask your questions you have a place to go and get advice but most importantly you have a place to see and be inspired by other people who are building stuff and you get to help other people you get to answer their questions you get to work on their projects with them and you get to have other people help you work on your project so that's the whole idea behind the code 365 startup lab and setting up the discord and all this stuff team is so we can begin to build our own economies to, to grow our own things so we out we're out here and we want jobs there's nothing wrong with that but in order to generate that side income team so you don't have to work the job if you don't have to my problem is i had the great job the good jo the good job team with the good money and all this stuff and i wasn't building any other stuff i was just i was just going to work and i'm learning the code and i'm doing like tutorials and stuff like that but i'm not building anything that's going to make any money and there's all kinds of websites out there that are running where people are making livings from these websites team so anyway so let's go back over to the uh let's go back over to the youtube and let's look at these comments right so yeah again if you want that mentorship code 365 startup lab team subscribe to the channel watch all the videos i'm just dropping knowledge from this point on i'm gonna keep it real with you man we're gonna be talking about all kinds of stuff software code business politics all the things that i think that that people are uh, they're missing like like there's there's this saying you can't serve two masters and what the, what this basically means is that like if your attention is divided you can't get to where it is you want to go and there's a bunch of stuff out here that's dividing our attention team we got we got software frameworks we got different we got different industries we got different we got different roles inside of those industries we got different different pay scales we got all these different things so anyway so they say uh i'm learning web dev it says if i'm learning web dev is it useful or pointless to learn adobe illustrator and photoshop so many jobs in my area are looking for graphic designers or web devs with adobe experience so check it out team so if you if, if you if you're in the area and you know with certainty that that's what people are looking for then yeah 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 you now now here's the here's what messes people up right is because we 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 don't want to be embarrassed so we'll go out and we'll start learning this stuff and then we'll go apply for the job that's that's the wrong way to think about it so if you if you're applying for jobs and your and your goal is to be a web developer like you want to sit down and you want to write code right apply for those jobs where you're writing the code but if they say hey we need somebody with the knowledge of photoshop and illustrator just put yes put yes i got a knowledge of photoshop and illustrator and then you go out to youtube and you just take some courses on photoshop and illustrator that's it and you just make some stuff make an icon make a website layout make a print page layout make make um make some sort of advertisement banner and you can look all this stuff up like when you're making your portfolio website you can look on youtube and say how to make a portfolio website you'll see a bunch of different things about portfolio websites you can go on google and be like hey portfolio website like literally just portfolio website now watch look at what we get create a stunning website right, so we can go here we can look at this create a stunning website and some of you don't see where this is going all right so we've got so they give us a bunch of a bunch of websites we can use to make websites let's go back best portfolio websites web design inspiration boom right so award.com i didn't even think about this I, I love this website so we could go in here let's look at these sites man let's just let's just pick one at random so we'll just scroll down 
and grab this one right here. You can build this. Go build this website. Go build it. Go build it. And then like this data that they have down here, you can go pull this. In. You could go pull in something and make something that looks like this. You can pull it in from GitHub or something, right? You just pull in a bunch of GitHub users, have them lined up at the bottom of your page, and you're done, right? And in, in, in this site, if, if you've never done this before, this looks complicated. It does. I got it. I understand, team. But check it out. All this stuff you can do. You can build the, You can build this main background yourself. You can do the. You can do all the text on here, and then you, but you got these in animations. I don't know if they animate in. Let's go see. Let's re, let's refresh. So you where you get these animations? There's a library for this. So you can just go. Um, you could either look through the source code, like you just go here. Uh, let's see, view source. Where would it be? So I'm right clicking on this page. So we'll go inspect elements, and it'll bring up the source code over here. So we could read through the source code and see if there's any indication of some sort of library that they're using to do like these animations. Um, but if we if we don't find one, we could just look on the internet and go out and be like, hey, right? Go 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 into go over to um to to Reddit and say, hey guys, hey, I look, I saw this website. Put the link in there. I saw this website. Hey, how do I make these animations? What's the name of the the, the library they use to make these? Somebody will tell you. Or you could go into the you can go into the the Code Three Six Five Startup Lab Discord. That's what it's for. That's like the whole purpose of it, right? Go in there. Hey guys, what's this thing? How do I make this? Has anybody made this before? Can somebody help me make this, right? And the, somebody may pop up and be like, Yeah, man, right, right. Um, do you have this repo online? They go, they fork the repo, they add this to it, and then they send you a pull request. You pull this in, boom. Now you got your now you got your deal with your numbers up here, team. So, so, but you can. So and, and here's the deal, like you don't have to know Photoshop or Illustrator or HTML or CSS or JavaScript or anything. When, when it comes to jobs, your job is to get the interview. That's it. And then after you got the interview, you got to get to the interview and you have to prove to them that you can do the work. So you apply for the jobs and then you go do the learning. And the best way to learn is to just build and who knows, right? Maybe, maybe the very first, the very first job you apply to, you get an interview and you go and you show up and they don't ask you any hard questions and you get the job. W but what if you never applied? This is what people, this is what messes people up. What if you never applied because you were trying to go out and learn the stuff in the first place? Now, th there's a higher likelihood that you'll get an interview you get or you get more than one interview and you go in and they'll ask you about some stuff you know nothing about right and and if, and if that's the, and if that's the case it's the case man it's just the case you don't even if you apply for a job where you think you know everything there's a possibility that you show up and they ask you a bunch of questions that you don't have any answers to you've never done it be, like you've never worked with that company before who knows how they do things you could go find a graphic design company and get in there and they'd be like, we don't know Photoshop. Right. Or, 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 right. It, let's take, let's take, let's take this case right here where he say he's seeing these jobs where you need Illustrator and Photoshop. What if all they need someone to do is to go in and to resize images? What, what if they don't know? What if the person working there, the people working there don't understand that you can use HTML and CSS to resize images? You don't have to go into Photoshop and resize every image. Maybe what if what if this company is hiring you to come in and to optimize images to, to make them faster to perform on websites? And, you know, as a developer, dude, you could write some sort of program or get some sort of some sort of library that will that will process photos either before or after the page is put online and so and now you don't they, there doesn't have to be anybody who sits there using photoshop to do anything if that's all the company is doing is they, they're optimizing these graphics on this web page so we don't even know we don't know what kind of skills they're looking for we don't have a clue the only way to know is to ask 
So you go, you apply for the jobs, and when they call, you say, hey, exactly what kind of Photoshop stuff do you need done? And they'd be like, oh, well, we just cut and crop a lot of images. And you'd be like, yeah, I know how to do that. And they'd be like, well, what's your experience? And you'd be like, well, I build websites, and sometimes I get clients, and I get work where I have to cut and crop images. That's it. But before they call you, after you apply for, the, you know, your 10 jobs a day, before they call you, you go out, and you just learn something new every day. Just pick something. Just pick one thing. I'm going to learn something new about HTML. I'm going to learn something new about JavaScript. I'm going to learn something new about CSS. I'm going to learn something new about Photoshop. And the knowledge is all around you. The information is all out there. You go, you learn something new, you build something, make, make a couple things, put them on the internet, put them in your portfolio somewhere, put them online, just save them somewhere, and now you can reference back to them later on. Somebody asks, have you ever done this before? You can say, yeah, here it is. And let them decide. Let them decide if it's good or bad. How many artists, how many, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at modern art. Modern art. Let's see, control shift. Uh, here, we're just going to go up here and we're just going to hit the X to control that. And we'll go over to images. Look at this, right? I'm sure if we look through here long enough, we can find something in here that we have probably painted similar to it. Or, or, or even, let's go here, not modern art, let's go abstract, abstract art. So this is what abstract art looks like. And then let's go like most, most expensive abstract art. Most expensive abstract art. Go over here. So we got all these abstract art. Let's go to the web and see most expensive abstract paintings. Let's go over here. Uh, this one isn't found. How does this even happen, right? How did these guys, the first search result, and, and there's a 404 error. But anyway, so let's look over here. $44 million for, for this team. Come on. $44 million bucks. Now, if you did this in your garage, and you hung it in your living room, and, 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 you, drove, and you drove a Hyundai Accent, when people came to your house, you have this exact same image. And some people would go, dude, this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And some people go, this is amazing. Right? And some people go, how much does it cost? And you say $44 million. And if it's, if it's hanging in a 2,000 square foot house with a Honda Accent parked out front, people, they will laugh at you. They will call you crazy. You're a madman. You're insane. Who are you to charge $44 million for this piece of, for, for, for just some paint splattered on a piece of paper? But if you take this and you put it in a 20,000 square foot mansion with a Rolls Royce parked out front and a helicopter on a helipad in the back and somebody asks how much it costs, you say $44 million. They'll say, that's a bargain. Wow, this is amazing. How can I buy it from you? Like the world is weird, man. We don't know. So you just apply and then you just go out and you just do some stuff and you just do it over and over and over again. Now, here's the secret sauce. The stuff that, that nobody talks about, team, the stuff that you aren't going to learn in school. The secret sauce is taking the thing that you're interested in and putting it in conjunction with something that you are good at. This is what makes great businesses great. Let's take the story of McDonald's, for instance. We got old Ray Kroc. He's going around the country selling milkshake makers or, or whatever these things are, right? And he comes across this restaurant. Where these guys are making burgers, and they aren't making the best burgers in town. They're good burgers, but they make them efficiently. They make them fast. People can pull up to this place, and they can walk up, and they can give these guys a nickel or ten cents, and they can have a burger in, in like ten seconds. And, be, and then there's benches. They go sit down, and they eat, they eat their food. So you can go buy lunch and have lunch instantaneously. This is a brand new concept. Nobody's seen this before. People back then, they're like, oh, my gosh, right? Like, and so he's, he's seeing this, and he's going like, dude, people everywhere can use something like this. Imagine the possibilities. And so he takes, he, he takes his knowledge of all the different places that he goes to sell these milkshakes, all the different places that sell milkshakes in conjunction with something else. He knows how many customers these people are getting. He knows how many milkshakes they're selling. He knows all this stuff. 
he's got this experience that the McDonald's brothers don't have because they've been at this one burger stand selling burgers. But he's been to hundreds, if not thousands of burger stands. So he's seen this play it out over and over and over again. But these guys stick out in his mind because they do it a different way. And he goes, if everybody else did it this way, they could be rich. So he goes down that path. And, and he takes his knowledge of sales. And I don't know if that's what Ray cared about. I don't know if what I don't know what Ray Kroc really cared about. Maybe he really cared about milkshakes. I don't know. But he was a good salesperson and he knew it. It was his gift. Right. He was gifted with the with the with the whatever it takes to be able to go from from business to business all across America whatever gift that whatever you would call that gift right intestinal fortitude perseverance grit i don't know right maybe he just loved it maybe he loved to to drive maybe driving was his gift and because he loved to drive he was able to just drive all across the country and sell these milkshake things until he came across the mcdonald's brothers so he takes his gift and he applies it to this thing that he understands business in the process the process that the mcdonald's brothers are using to make burgers and he puts them together and it turns into mcdonald's and this guy gets rich kentucky fried chicken colonel sanders man this dude had never man he was broke until he was like 60 years old and then one day he was like i'm just gonna fry chicken and he started frying chicken he knew how to fry chicken he made good chicken so he's and people started buying his chicken Right. I listen to Steve Harvey a lot. Steve Harvey talks about Marie Callender's and her pies. Marie, I don't know what Marie was doing before. But anyway, so she bakes this pie, takes the pie to this restaurant. Somebody buys a piece of pie. They love the pie. The pie sells out. The guy calls, hey, I need another pie. She makes another pie. Then she needs another pie and another pie. Eventually, this guy ends up selling more pies. His whole business turns into pies, but he doesn't know how to make pies. She knows how to make pies. He knows how to run the restaurant. So she makes the pies. He runs the restaurant. Marie Callender's rich. She has her. There's Marie Callender restaurants all across America. There's Marie Callender pies in all the grocery stores. Like Steve Harvey tells the story way better than I can. The point is, team, is that we don't know. We have no clue. We are, we are programmed to believe that there are certain criteria that have to be met. And there's not. The people who are the most successful are the people who are too stupid to know that they should not be successful. That's it. That's it. And, and, and it's not all just about getting a job, team. Right? You take, take this thing you're interested in and you put it with your gift. Now, you got to have money. So you go out and you get the job. And you get the job the exact way I'm telling you. You just apply to every job. Look, if, if, you, if you're out looking for a job in web development and it pops up, apply to it. That's it. Apply. And then at the same time, you're learning and you're building stuff and, you, and you're getting these interviews and you go to the interviews. Eventually, you get the job. But while you're while you're learning and you're building stuff, build stuff that you can use that may potentially make some money. Like you can you can put it out to somebody. Right. And so, like, say, for instance, you're learning data science and you want to be able to crunch a bunch of numbers. What numbers can you crunch that are out there already that people will pay to come and look at there's tons there's tons of them so like look there's a website here in washington called 502data.com because we can you can you can buy marijuana legally in washington so what these guys at 502 data did is the state collects all of this information because it's public domain from the taxes on the way they tax marijuana so it's all public information. This company, 502 Data, they go out, they aggregate all this information, they put it in this website so it's easy and plain for anybody to see and to go look at. And if we go down here to the, bo not the bottom, where is it at? If we go uh, 502 Data Pro, to sign up for the pro plan, it's 79 bucks a month, or you could get $588 a year, or you go $207 every three months. But they are selling data. It's data that anybody can go get. Any of us can go get this data. What they're selling is the fact that they put this data in a form that regular people can read and understand. That's it. They're selling, they're selling the interface. 
and every software company out there is selling interface to information windows windows the operating system is just a, a interface to the computer it's an interface to, the computer has become an interface to the internet you want to get on the internet you need some sort of computer right you can have a desktop a laptop a mobile phone tablet whatever it doesn't matter but to get to the internet you have to have a computer it's the only way you can use the internet the only way you can use the internet is with the computer the only way you can use a computer is with the operating system the only way you can get to the internet is with the web browser if the if the web, if the operating system doesn't have a web browser like windows didn't in in 19 whenever whenever back in the early days of windows there was no web browser and then a company called netscape came along with a web browser because people wanted to use the operating system to get to the internet and then windows made internet explorer and people just stopped downloading netscape and these other web browsers because a web browser came with the operating system and there was this whole big war about it and i got to do a project on it in school about it and and so it's all just data in the background team so first you got to get the job and then once you get the job right or while you're getting the job you're building stuff like this that's going to be useful to someone and you have a portfolio website where people can come and they can find you and then they can go out and they can find all this other stuff. Like if you go to therealcasadero.com, it's just a regular website. You click the shop button. It takes you to a store. You can buy the same hats that you see me wearing in these videos. Right? You go get your Visual Studio Code hat. You can go get your, um, I haven't added the other hats back, but you, there's other hats coming, team. Uh, you could grab a shirt. You grab a mug. You grab stickers. If we go back, we could go back to the website. We go here to learn, right? So you click the learn link. Oh, it takes you over here. Code 365 Startup Labs. This dude's talking about code. We got the about. It takes you to the YouTube page. You can watch the YouTube videos. We're going to add a podcast link. We're going to add a newsletter form. We're going to add all kinds of stuff, team. And you can build this same stuff. And you can have your own stuff out on the internet where people can go find it. And you're just building this stuff. You're putting it out there. So you can so you're gaining experience, you're gaining knowledge, and then when people come along and they ask you, can you do these certain things, you can point to these things. And you don't know what people are gonna ask. You we can get clues. The clues come from the resume, the clues come from what the business does, the clues come from our mind and strategic thinking. If we want to go work at a Google, we have to learn data science. We have to learn about data structures and algorithms because that's what Google does. They do data structures and algorithms. They sift over millions and billions of, of, of bytes of data in order to give people the most accurate search results possible. So people like you and me in businesses will come and they'll advertise on Google. That's it. And society has us wrapped up in this thing. We're like, you know, there's something special. Like we have to have these criteria. Think about this team, right? Like if you're a bank, if you own a bank, if you started a bank and, you, and, and you're in and, and the way you make money as a bank is to charge people interest. The most important thing you can do is loan people money. But what are people going to borrow money for? I mean, when you think about it at the core, people don't if if in if, if unless you want to buy a house or a car, you probably don't need to borrow any money. Maybe very little amounts, but those those amounts are so insignificant. If you go to a bank and you borrow a hundred bucks, maybe they charge you a hundred dollars. Maybe they charge you ten dollars in interest. So in order for them to make enough money to pay to to pay millions in salaries, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in salaries, even just your local branch, for them to pay a bank teller to stand there, how much should a bank teller make? What's a livable wage for a bank teller? We talk about livable wages these days. What would be a livable wage for a bank teller? Let's say a livable wage for a bank teller is $3,000 a month. So that means the bank needs to make at least $3,000 a month just to pay the bank teller. This is before the bank has to pay the light bill, the phone bill, the electric bill, the taxes, the internet, before they buy computers, desks, chairs, whatever. They got a $3,000 a month just to the bank teller. And how does the bank make money? The bank makes money from, from, store, from, from keeping people's money safe. How much money do they have to keep safe in order to be able to collect the fee of $3,000 a month just to pay one bank teller? So, right? 
if the, if the, there's one of two ways you can do it. You can well, you can do both ways. You can go out and you can find as many depositors as possible, hundreds, thousands of them. So collectively, you can charge them a very low fee. And at the end of the month, you have enough money to pay the bank teller all the bills and everything and have some sort of profit to pay for all the risk you took in opening the bank. You probably have to borrow money from another bank. Just open your bank. But how do you get there? Like, how do you get to the profit? Like, so, so you can find a whole bunch of people with a little money or you find a few people with a lot of money. And it's hard to find people with just a lot of money who just want to give you their money. So, but, but what if, what if you could find people who have money and want more money and you could convince them to give you their money and you could convince them to borrow somebody else's money and then pay you for the opportunity to borrow the money. That's where interest comes from. So now we got interest team. So it, the, the banks are incentivized to, to, to push for us to buy homes and for us to buy cars. Now, if you're a bank and you're in banking and your business is lending money, how do you get people excited about buying houses and cars? You pay for commercials, you pay for TV shows, you pay for sports teams, you pay for all this other stuff. You fund all this other stuff. You get the government to pass laws. You get the government to, to, to promote this stuff. Politicians. You take, poli you take a politician who has no business acumen at all and you say, hey, man, right? I think it would be a great thing if everybody owned a home. And it would be a great thing if everybody owned a home. Yeah, sure, it would be fantastic. But they, how are they going to get the home, right? So you say, hey, right, they got to borrow some money. And you're working a decent job. You're making $3,000 a month, right? You can go and get yourself a home and, you know, pay $500 a month for a mortgage. And then and then you get people hooked. And now, and now when, 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 51 out of every 100, 100 people have a house, and that looks like success. Everybody else wants success, so they're like, I got to go get a house. And so they go, and they figure out how to borrow money. And in order to borrow money, they have to have a job. And so in order to have a job, you got to go out, and you got to get a job, and then you got to earn more money, right? And so we're pushed into this, team, right? Nobody's thinking about, like, hey, I can do this myself. We go out, we learn this skill. People out there all day, every day, learning to build websites. Learning to write code, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, Django, C Sharp, C++, Swift. It's all out there, team, man. They're out there learning this stuff all day, every day, so they can go out and they can try to figure out how to get a job and build stuff for somebody else. And, the, and, and that's cool because you got to get the money. You figure out how to do it, and then you get stuck 20, 30, 40 years. You get fired, and now you're going like, shit, man. Like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. How do I change careers? How do I do something else? It's because... We were doing the wrong thing in the first place, or we were doing the wrong thing for the wrong reasons. Maybe we we're doing the right thing for the wrong reasons. Here, here it is, team, right? Take your gift, whatever it is you're good at, whatever it is you're interested in, and it could be anything. If you're an American and you're listening to this right now, your gift is anything. Any, it, it could be something that you think is not even possible for you to make money at doing. Baking pies, painting pictures. There's a guy who started a, a million-dollar business drawing little photos. And, and, and dude, like some clowns took this and they went on Shark Tank and they tried to turn it into a business. And, I, you know, I think they got funded. I can't remember. I think they got a deal. And now it's the thing. I'm pretty sure Mr. Wonderful invested in it. And this guy, like, you go to his website and you put in some criteria and he will draw a picture and send it to you. And come on, team. You're a software developer. You're, you understand this. Could you not write a program that takes in some sort of description? And I mean, it doesn't even have to be comp. Like, you ain't got to be like a machine learning algorithm scientist to do this. You can just roll up on the Internet and be like, OK, look, right. Right. I draw. Let's pick some. I draw pictures of dogs. Right. Hand drawn pictures of dogs. Cool. Somebody comes on and say, I need a picture of a bulldog. You write a program that that takes people's input, goes out to Google or Bing or wherever and finds pictures that look like that. Downloads one of the pictures. And then it goes and creates a sketch of this picture. And now you got pictures. Now you got an automated, automated system to draw dogs. Or you can build a membership website where people come and you can say, hey, I pay $5 for every dog you draw or something like that. You got another website where people come and they pay $10 to buy the pictures of dogs. Somebody comes, they buy a picture of a dog. 
an advertisement goes up, hey, I need somebody to draw a dog like this. It pays five bucks. Somebody comes on, they draw the dog, They you pay them five bucks. You give the dog to the other person, they give you ten. Now you've got a business. That's how businesses work. They're all the same. And you can build this. Any web developer can build it. Anybody who understands HTML, CSS, and JavaScript can go build it. You just got to go. You don't know it off the top of your head. You just got to know where to go. Where do I start? First, I got to build a user interface. How do I collect information? I need an input form. What do I do with the input form? Okay, I need a server. I got to send this input form to somewhere. How do I do that? How do I process an input form? That's what all the tutorials are for. All the tutorials that you guys are out there taking... Right, new aspiring developers, the ones that you're going to take, the ones you're thinking about taking, for those of you who are going to go sign up for the Code 365 Startup Lab, you're learning this stuff so you can build some stuff. And you're building this stuff so you can get some knowledge and retain it. So, when you get calls back on all these jobs you're applying to, you can go into the interviews and you can say, when they ask you a question and you don't understand what they're asking, you can say, hey, I don't understand that, what do you mean? And they can go, oh, well, I mean, like, and you can say, well, what does that apply to? They could say, oh, well, this is an application of front-end development. You say, front-end development, what does that mean? And they say, oh, well, you know, making web pages that people can look at and see. Okay, so you want to know if I can build a user interface. And they're like, yeah, exactly. And you say, yes, I can. I have some examples on my website if you would like to take a look. And I have examples of all the code on my GitHub if you would like to go there and take a look as well. And they'll go, either say yes or no right? they say yeah sure you show them all this stuff they like it or they don't like it doesn't matter team doesn't matter some people are going to think the stuff you make is great some people are going to think the stuff you make is terrible some people are going to think it looks exactly like somebody else's stuff somebody's going to come to this website and they're going to go hey this looks exactly like the supreme website he stole it and some people are going to come and go this is amazing it's genius it's so simple and elegant Right. And I mean, you just don't know, man. You just got to make this stuff. You just got to go out there and just learn the technology and just do the th and just do the just do the work, team. And that's how you get there. But that is it, team. That is it for this episode. I look forward to hanging out with you guys tomorrow. If you would like to support the channel, check out the code three, six, five startup lab dot com. And like I said, these courses, they're all going to get some sort of pricing. So if you want to support the channel when you sign up for any course, that that money goes to goes to keep the lights on, keep the Internet running, feed the kids, feed myself. Right. Goes to keep this whole thing going. But most importantly, what it does is it gives me the time and freedom to keep creating courses like this and stuff inside of the actual Code 365 Startup Lab membership where we have HTML, CSS. Well, we have HTML right now, and I'm telling you, team, as you go through this, just the initial HTML portion, right? So first we got getting to the money. This is how to go out and how to find clients, team, right? So you want to be, you want to get a job. Cool. This in here will show you how to, right? You go out, you do what I said as far as getting a job, but this is something you can do in addition to that before or after you have the job to bring in some potential extra business. And then down here you go, you set up your environment, and then you go beyond the primer and you really dig deep into what it means to know HTML. Get up, get, wrap your head around HTML super well, and then you'll understand search engine optimization, and you'll be able to build websites that show up higher in search. And then you get down, and then after this, when I finish the HTML, HTML, we go in the CSS, show you how to lay everything out, and then we get into the JavaScript team. And from there, you're able to build whole applications e-commerce stores shopping carts websites all that stuff so as as a incentive for being the first on board and helping start the and helping start the 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 code 365 startup lab and support the channel and become a part of the community lifetime access is priced at 99 bucks or you can come in and check it out for 29 bucks a month team this is a steal this is a steal i'm telling you as time goes on and like i said the free courses that are here right now they're all bundled inside of the code 365 startup lab so when I put prices on the free courses, you're still going to have access to all of those. But then I'm going to be producing more courses. It's going to be HTML Genius. There's going to be CSS Alchemy. There's going to be JavaScript Wizard. right? And all these things will be designed to show you how to build website after website, application after application that you can put online, use as a part of a portfolio website, turn into some sort of income, or even go over to websites like Flippa. That's 
F-L-I-P-P-A dot com. So Flip is a marketplace. You can buy and sell websites over here, team. So this is the kind of stuff we're trying to get into. So imagine you go out, you're building a website for your portfolio. Like let's look at this, let's look at this, uh, let's let's look at this website right here, house charts. So let's see what they're talking about. We go in here, it's a PH, PHP website. It's been around for five years. They're selling it for twelve grand. And let's see. Uh, I'm looking for a URL. I don't see one. But unique dance music charts website established in 2014. Website entertainment industry. Uh, let's see. And I have an account. I could log in. But anyway, this is just to show you, right? So somebody built this website. It's not a great looking website. So you could go out and build a website exactly like this. It, it'll only be online for five or ten minutes. But that's cool, right? You go charge 50 bucks for it, 100 bucks for it. Maybe somebody will buy it. Maybe they won't. Doesn't matter. It's just sitting in your portfolio doing nothing anyway. And then if you optimize it, throw some ads on it and just let it sit on the internet, SEO it, just let it sit. Put a domain name to it, see who shows up. Put a couple affiliate banners on it, some links. So people click on it, you bring in some money. Now it's making a little bit of money. It's making a little bit of money. You can sell it for a little more money. Because you know it's going to grow over time. You can you can extrapolate that. So if if you set this thing up, and by the end of the month it makes five dollars in ad money, and then the end of the next month it makes ten, and then the end of the next month it makes fifteen, right? So we're saying like, hey, right, this thing, as soon as it made five bucks, it grew uh, it grew a hundred percent from zero to five, and then when it grew to ten, it grew fifty percent, and then when it grew to fifteen, it grew another that that would be at thirty three percent, and then when it grew fifteen, right? So and you can say, hey, this thing is growing 50% a day, right? Or, or whatever whatever the percentage is. And so you extrapolate that out a year. And like, say by the end of the year, you're, you're, you're thinking like, if this if this thing, if it, if, if it makes, if it does an additional $5 a day every day by the end of the month, how much would that be? And then you could turn around and you can multiply that by 10. I mean, you, well, you can say by the end of the year, multiply that by 10 and now you got a price you can sell the website at. Or you could just, but at the same time, you could build it and just put it up here and it's just sitting for 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Put it on some template site. Tell all your friends, hey guys, got this website I built, got this template, put it on social media, message everybody, email everybody, hey, got this template, check it out. You get this for like, you know, get this for 10 bucks. Pick it up right now, team. It's all yours. Go in, edit it, do whatever you want. All right? And, this, and so that's the goal. It's to show people just as I like you can go out and build this kind of stuff. So this is what I'm going to be doing in the Code 365 Startup Lab. I'm going to be building stuff like this team. It's time to get serious about it. This is stuff that I've known for ages and I've never done. So if you're looking for mentorship, if you're looking for like, if you're looking for, for somebody to push you, my goal is to set up the lab in such a way where we're just, people are inspired. We bring ideas to each other and we go, hey, look team, like how, how can we, how can we, how can we make something that inspires people right so maybe we have some deal where like we do contests and people are people are building these sites and we say you know who can get to a hundred dollars first or who can go to get to a thousand dollars first or maybe like we have idea contests weekend hackathons we're all hop on the discord and we're like hey everybody go out and build this thing and let's see who makes the best one and then and then the next hackathon we're going to make this better and we're going to come up with some products to put on it we're all going to seo it right you know whatever team like this is that's I mean that's a way that's a ways off but for right now like that's that's kind of the direction I want to go but but the first thing is to just get in and to just start building stuff team and don't be afraid to go out and apply for the jobs apply for the jobs but then build your own stuff but build it in a way that you can use it to get the jobs so anyway team that is it that is it for this episode is your biggest fan the real Casadero share subscribe like hit the notification bell so you're notified when new episodes like this come out so i can keep dropping the knowledge putting that knowledge on your head team and if you want to support the channel sign up for the code 365 startup lab and you can also check out rightcodedrinkcoffee.com rightcodedrinkcoffee.com and you can get to all these places by just going to the real casadero.com team and you can hit the contact and you can hit me in the direct messages on twitter if you need to contact me from now and uh of course if you want to shop you go here shop you can go learn and then of course if you hit about this going to take you to the youtube page where you can subscribe to the channel team just click one of these videos hit the subscribe button you're well on your way the biggest fan the real casadero i will see you guys in the next episode team. Mm -hmm.